This is Legacy Over Likes. I am Drew. This is going to be the first uh, in the, the new series of videos that I'm going to start putting out uh, each Monday. Uh, that's going to be more sports related. Uh, so if you're just creeping into this video and you've been following me for some time, uh, it's okay. Thursdays, I will be posting up my, my just kind of my normal type flow videos, which is going to be you know, whatever, my inspirational stuff, motivation, just my life, my journey, me vlogging, whatever. So if you came onto this video just to hear me talk about sports, hey, uh, check out the other videos, like get to know me a little bit. But I understand if that's not why you're here, uh, it's cool. And that's why I'm splitting it up the way that I am so that I give, you know, the people that came here for the sports, their videos, the people that come to see me for the other stuff, their videos. And uh, it still gives me a chance to kind of you know, get into that, which I do enjoy. Um, so before I get into this discussion, which I do want to get into, right, this now possibly Derek Carr coming to the Bucks, uh, Philip Rivers, maybe Tom Brady, like, is that like, is somebody like, do people actually take this seriously? Like, I don't know, slash Jameis Winston, right? And, and I want to get into this discussion. But before I do so, I just want to explain a little bit what you're getting yourself into when you hear me talk about sports. Um, one, I'm not really the X's and O's type of guy, right? Like, I'll get into statistics. Um, I'll break that down for you, and, and that's cool and everything. I'll do that once in a while. But but if you're looking to hear somebody talk about, you know, the X's and O's and, you know, oh, let's run to the left, let's throw to the right, like, I'm really not going to break too much of that down. I don't really care so much about that. I will break down certain offensive styles, certain defensive styles, and what I think works and doesn't work and, and whatever. But but again, I enjoy the psychology behind the game. I enjoy the interactions between the coaches and the players. I love watching press conferences, body language. I get into all that stuff, right? You're going to hear me talk about zodiac signs. I'm going to break down different players and their personalities. And again, you know, if you've been following me for any period of time, you'll know I'm big into that. And um, and with public figures, with athletes, you know, I'm not going out here breaking down their full Zodiac chart. You know what I mean? I'm just going to be able to tell you, like, Bruce Arians is a Libra. And maybe you don't care about that, right? Maybe you don't mind. But but I get into the personality stuff. I, I love it. So uh, it is what it is, right? I'm just giving you a fair warning. If you come in here to hear somebody, you know, break down... Uh, football or baseball or anything in the most traditional way that you're used to i'm not that guy right you might want to go somewhere else if that's what you want so uh so let's talk about uh Derek carr first of all well first let's talk about how i feel about the quarterback position okay right, so this is gonna... first let's get into the way that i feel about the quarterback position to begin with okay this is going to sound really messed up, and I might lose a lot of people when I say this, but I feel like the quarterback position has always been labeled as the most important position on the field. I feel like it can at times be the most overrated position on the field. All right? If you need me to really break that down for you, I can, and I probably will go on a bit of a tangent here, but, but let's remember this former quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that led the Ravens, okay, led the Ravens might be a strong word, to a Super Bowl championship, right? That just happened to be played in our own stadium there in Tampa when Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl with the Ravens, okay? So, hey, again, I think everyone in the world knew that the defense carried that team that year, but I'm just saying, I'm just making a point. I mean, look at the Bucks when we won the Super Bowl. Is anybody out there ever going to, like, hoot and holler and say that Brad Johnson is a is a Hall of Fame quarterback? So when we talk about, like, what it takes for a team to win a Super Bowl championship, I think everybody knows that it's defense, right? You got to be able to run the ball. You got to be able to protect the ball. And ultimately, we've seen some pretty trash quarterbacks. I say trash. That's kind of harsh, but... But we've seen some lackluster quarterbacks win some Super Bowls, okay? And then we've seen quarterbacks that are just Hall of Fame, no doubters. Look at Drew Brees. I get into conversations all the time with Saints fans that, that just want to bash Jameis Winston. And 
I'm, I'm a Jameis Winston guy. I love Jameis. Um, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of defending his turnovers. But um, but I'll explain further as to why I love Jameis Winston so much. But but I always tell him, I'm like, hey, like if it's all on the quarterback, you got a Hall of Fame no-doubter with one Super Bowl. I'm also a conspiracy theorist, so... It just so happened to be after Hurricane Katrina, right? But anyways, I'm not going to go down that lane right now, okay? Because I don't want to throw shade on anything. And, and that's not really where I want to go right now. But whatever. So, so let's let's just get that out of the way as far as the way I feel. And and another point that I'll make on that, you know, I remember, uh, I remember uh, Ray Lewis making a comment saying that if it wasn't for the tuck rule, if it wasn't for the tuck rule, that Tom Brady wouldn't be where he is today. And he got a lot of backlash on that. But, you know, let's let's think about this. Again, I don't want to go too far off of what I really wanted to talk about today. But this is kind of like what I want to talk about, right? Is the overall feeling that I have on the quarterback position. But if you take away that tuck rule, okay, and the Raiders win that game and move on to the Super Bowl, right? Which they should have. Thank God they didn't, because obviously as a Bucks fan, that led to Gruden coming to Tampa, us winning a Super Bowl championship, blah, 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 blah. But the Patriots don't win that game. Who's to say that Drew Bledsoe is not the quarterback of the Patriots the following year? I mean, let's remember he got hurt. Like, I'm just saying, like, it wasn't that far of a stretch for Ray Lewis to say that Tom Brady wouldn't be where he is today. And if, if we need to, to make a point on how overrated or the way that sometimes we hype quarterbacks up, put Tom Brady on the Cleveland Browns for the last 20 years. Put him on the Tampa Bay Bucks for the last 20 years. I love Tom Brady, right? He's, he's clutch. He comes through when it counts. But come on, he's in the system that was like literally built and designed for him. I watched a breakdown on the difference between him, the difference between him and Peyton Manning. And how when Tony Dungy came into Indianapolis, how it was basically known like Peyton Manning ran the show. Like he ran that offense. Like that was his baby. Whereas Tom Brady, that really wasn't his gig, right? He was the one that was like the field sergeant that like, all right, you give me the, the call, right? You tell me where we're going to attack and I'm going, right? And I'll lead the, the troops. They're going to have faith in me. And he's done that maybe better than anybody else. The dude is legit. I'm not throwing shade at him. I'm just saying you put him on the Cleveland Browns for the last 20 years. I don't know if he's got a Super Bowl. I say I don't know. I really want to say no, he doesn't have a Super Bowl. Okay? So, <laughs> so this leads me into the discussion of Derek Carr coming up in my feed today as a possible quarterback to come in for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to be real with you. I don't even know his contract situation. I don't know if he's a free agent. I don't know if they're talking about trade, release. I have no idea. I really don't. And and maybe I should have like looked up all these stats. But again, that's not how I do it. I just go off my gut. So I do know off the top that his turnover percentage is much lower than Jameis Winston. Okay, And that is, as I mentioned early on in this video... That is the one thing I cannot argue with anyone on when it comes to Jameis, okay? I just happened to come from a time where I remember being in Raymond James Stadium and Sean King dropping back to throw a ball and the entire stadium, the entire stadium taking a breath and you could feel it like, oh, oh what's going to happen? People talk about Jameis turning the ball over. We were scared when Sean King dropped back. We were scared. In my entire life, as a Bucks fan, the first time I felt any excitement watching a quarterback, I'm going to be real, Jeff Garcia. When Jeff Garcia came to Tampa, I remember being like, man, like this dude is fun to watch. And that's the feeling I have when I watch Jameis. At least he gives me something fun to watch. We may not be winning, but it's fun to watch. Now, yeah, would I love to have like the Chiefs offense and Patrick Mahomes? And yeah, would I love that? Hey, yeah, that would be great. That'd be awesome, but we don't. We've got a traditional drop back. Your quarterback's going to get pounded type of offense, and that's Bruce Arians, and sometimes it's really fun, and sometimes it's like, oh, my gosh, this is scary to watch because he's going to turn the ball over, and I really don't care what 
quarterback it is, it's going to happen. Carson Palmer did a pretty good job of it. I don't know. So it's all about the fit. And I think Jameis is the right fit for this offense. But he just can't turn the ball over. So Derek Carr, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him. I really don't. I mean, he's okay. But do I think he's going to come in and, and do what we need him to do? I don't know. Again, it goes back to my original point. You don't need the best. You just need somebody that doesn't turn the ball over. Let's our defense do what they need to do. And let's win a Super Bowl, all right, in Tampa this year. That would be awesome, right? Let's go on to the next one, Phillip Rivers. I love Phillip Rivers. I really do. But he's really like an older clone of Jameis Winston. And that's not a knock on either one of them because I love Phillip Rivers. I do. I really like Phillip Rivers a lot. I've always thought he's one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. And to prove my point once again, the guy that was drafted by the San Diego Chargers, Eli Effing Manning. Is there anyone out there that thinks Eli Manning is a better quarterback than Phillip Rivers? He got super, two Super Bowl championships. But do we think he's a better quarterback than Phillip Rivers? Swap places. I don't know that Phillip Rivers wins the Super Bowl in New York. But I know that watching Phillip Rivers, I've seen like muffed fumbles, missed field goals. If you watch the Chargers the way that I've watched the Chargers, okay, my dad has watched the Chargers for years and years and years, all right, then you know, if you're not paying attention, you're just looking at the end of the game and you hear ESPN like the Bucks do, right? It's like everyone else. It's like they chime in and they tell you, oh, well, Jameis blew it. But you don't see everything that led up to that. You don't see how many games the Bucks have lost because our field goal kickers can't hit a field goal. And it's been the same thing with Phillip Rivers. So I just don't know. Ultimately, I just want a winner, right? And I'm not saying Phillip isn't a winner, but he hasn't won. So he's not a winner. And I love Phillip, okay? The most comical one, Tom Brady. Are you kidding me? Like, wh why, why is this even getting brought up? Why am I even talking about Tom Brady right now? He's not going anywhere. To my point about him not winning anything in Cleveland, Tom Brady doesn't have the balls to go anywhere else and quarterback because he knows he ain't going to do squat. He ain't doing nothing. I had so much respect for Joe Montana when he went to Kansas City because he was leaving one of the greatest franchises of all time, right? Now, it really wasn't his choice to get out of there, but they, I mean, they, they booted him, but, but he, he could have retired, as the greatest or one of the greatest, but instead he went to Kansas City and what did he do? He still balled out. He didn't win a Super Bowl, but he went there and balled out. Tom Brady ain't going nowhere else and balling out. It ain't happening. Bill Belichick runs that show. You take him out of there and Bill Belichick is still winning games. I don't care what anybody says. The final one, Jameis Winston. I don't know. I love you, Jameis. I really do. And I love just your passion, your drive, but you got to stop turning the ball over so much, dude. If, if we're going to win, if we're going to accomplish anything this season, you got to stop. That means our defense has got to step up. That means our running game has got to step up. We got too many weapons on offense right now. Our offensive line has got to step up, but but we got to stop turning the ball over so much, man. That's all I got, all right? That's all I got. This is a little bit longer video. I probably would have went longer, but but I'm out hustling today, and um, and I got to get back at it. So uh, I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep moving forward. I will always trust the process. Leave a comment. Tell me what you want me to talk about on these videos. If you want me to get into college football this year, if you want me to get into baseball, hockey, basketball, I don't care. If you just want me to talk about bucks because that's why you're here, I'll do it whatever. Give me your thoughts. Let me know how you feel. Like, share, subscribe. I will talk to y'all later. I am out.